A new state report finds that the 988 Mental Health Crisis Hotline is helping save lives. More than 30,000 have called, text, or chatted messages seeking emergency help through that 24-hour hotline since it first started in last July. Also, the Minnesota Department of Health just released a new online report that shows what are the most common causes of violent deaths in our state, including death by suicide. For information about what the new data reveals about all violent deaths in Minnesota, as well as what you can do to prevent them, we talk with the Minnesota Department of Health. We're the Minnesota portion of the National Violent Death Reporting System. Um, and it, it ranges everything from um, information that's found on typical death certificates, like um, the date that the person died, the manner of their death, um, you know, what caused the injury, for example. And then we also look at things that are a little more detailed, like toxicology, um, results for each individual, um, circumstances surrounding and leading up to their death, such as whether or not they had a mental health problem, um, whether or not they left a suicide note in cases of suicide. Um, and if there was a homicide, what is the relationship between the victim and the suspect in that homicide? And so the violent death reporting system captures data on suicide, homicide, unintentional firearm deaths, law enforcement intervention, and um, undetermined deaths that may have been violent in nature. So that's a broad overview of what is in the dashboard. So there was a lot of information in there, a lot of mm -hmm. data. Maybe um, let's start with uh, suicides. What are what have we learned about suicides here, suicide deaths here in Minnesota? Well, so there's there's quite a bit of, of information historically uh, from death certificates, and so we know that suicides have been increasing for 20 years or so in Minnesota. Um, every now and then we get a year where it goes down, but generally speaking, they've been on the the increase on the rise. Um, and so we, we have lots of information from death certificates so that we know things like the patterns by sex and race and ethnicity, age group, um, what the cause of the injury was, whether it was firearms or suffocation, for example. Um, but what this adds for that is, like I said, those circumstances. Um, and so, you know, one of the things that kind of, um, it didn't necessarily surprise us, but it sort of confirmed what we had seen in other studies where less than 40% of uh, suicide decedents leave a suicide note. And that's important to know because it points out, A, that um, scene investigation is very, very important. So the work that the medical examiners and law enforcement do to investigate the scene to make sure that they're um, attributing the proper manner of death for the individual. Um, but it also lets us understand um, that it, there may not be that sort of, uh, or I should say it, it dispels a potentially common myth that um, there's always this note laying out exactly why the person did what they did um, so that people can have a little bit of closure. That's not always the case. And so we, we're looking for other ways in those circumstances to try and identify risk factors um, and ways that communities can use this data to intervene or create interventions to prevent suicide. The, um, as far as some of the suicides, what percentage or uh, were involved with firearms, what were involved with antidepressants, things like that? What were some of the data that you found? Yeah, so um, in any given year, it varies a little bit um, in terms of the percentage that are by firearm. Um, typically, it's between 45 and 50% of the suicide deaths occur. The, the injury that causes their death is uh, firearm related. Um, about 25% or so are from suffocation, and then there's about 10 or 15% in addition to that that are the poisonings, like um, the opioids that we hear quite a bit about. Um, so those are really the three um, most common. They make up about 90% in a given year of the suicide deaths in Minnesota. That's different from state to state, but in Minnesota, that's what the patterns tend to be. And there was also a difference between um, men and women in suicides as well. Interesting. Yeah, it's, there too. right. So what's what I'm what I've found in you know the few years that I've been focusing on suicide epidemiology is that depending on the population you're looking at, the epidemiology can be very different. So males, it's a little bit more likely to be firearms. Females, it's a little bit more likely to be the suffocations and poisonings. Um, that's different by racial groups and age groups as well. Um, and so that's one of the items that we hope this dashboard will let people see is. Um, they can look and filter by the population that they're most interested in, the population that they work with, 
and see what are some of those leading circumstances? Do they have mental health issues more commonly? Do they leave suicide notes for some reason? Um, do they have a history of past suicide attempts? These are things that can help identify increased risk for suicide and hopefully um, identify interventions to prevent suicide in the future. Especially on the mental health issues, we've heard so much about that. And that really comes out in this um, data as well, what role it's playing in a lot of these, um, not only suicides, but homicides as well. Right, so the, the two leading circumstances, the most common circumstances that we find in the medical examiner reports are that the victim had a current mental health problem or a history of mental illness treatment. Um, so that suggests that there is some opportunity for intervention to prevent suicide in mental health facilities, mental health interventions um, that might uh, catch some of those folks who um, would otherwise end up as uh, suicide decedents. Anything else that was surprising by the data that you found or that really stood out in your mind? Um, I mean, I look at the data all the time. And so it's, you know, I... I'm not arrogant enough to think that nothing surprises me, but it's hard to look back and say I was surprised at a certain time because I've gotten used to it. Um, one of the things that I was a little surprised by was the, the size of the difference in the toxicology results between males and females. Um, so the most common substance that was found in the systems of, of people who die by suicide was alcohol. And that's about 30% for both males and females, give or take a few percentage points. Um, antidepressants, however, were much more common in females than in males. And in hindsight, that makes a lot of sense because we know that males tend to avoid the healthcare system. And if you don't access the healthcare system, you're less likely to get antidepressants. Um, and so, but the, it was the size of the difference that surprised me, not so much the, the fact that there was a difference where females had a much higher rate of antidepressants in their system at the time they died than males. Um, and again, I think that's, you know, correlates a little bit with the mental illness treatment and um, suggests possible interventions um, where if they're getting prescriptions filled for certain medications, there can be extra messaging about suicide prevention, for example. For example. And what would be some of the other interesting data having to do with homicides as well as um, um, also you know, other causes of homicides and things like that, that really stood out. Right. So I think the the thing that I, I like to highlight the most about the homicide data is that it's been increasing. Um, it started increasing before the pandemic. I think there was plenty of, of reporting and recognition that the pandemic, as well as um, George Floyd's murder, were associated with an increase in homicides that summer in particular. And in 2021, I think we saw lots of news reports and we'll see that um, public health data confirming those news reports coming out soon that um, homicides continue to increase. So that's something that I think you know is displayed here, but isn't necessarily a surprise. Um, what may be surprising to people and that I like to also highlight is the nature of the relationship between the, the victim and the suspect. And so what we found is the largest proportion across the board of all homicides, there is some known relationship between the victim and the suspect. Um, these are not, um, the, the majority of the time, they're not strangers um, that are committing the homicide and the victim, you know, the, the relationship between the suspect and the victim. Um, they're not necessarily random. There, there is some relationship there. Uh, that's particularly true when you look at the female decedents, um, where somewhere in the ballpark of 40% of the suspects in those cases are current or former intimate partners. And again, it's not to say that it's surprising that intimate partner violence is a problem. We know that. It's been established for years. Um, but I think the size of that problem, the, the percentage, and again, the difference between the males and the females um, might be a little bit surprising to people. And I think it's important for people to know. And anything about firearms in particular, how those that data has changed or increased or reduced? Or... Sure. So the one thing that I do like to point out first about homicides, or not homicides, about firearms, um, and see, I, I even made the association in my head too, even though I live with this data all the time, that um, the, 
large majority of firearm deaths in Minnesota are not homicides, they're suicides. Um, on a year-to-year -year basis, that is between 65 and 75 percent of the firearm deaths are suicides. Um, the other 30 to 35 percent are homicides, so they make up, you know, virtually 100 percent. There are very few um, unintentional homicide deaths, which is, is um, you know, a relatively good thing. Um, but that's the first thing that I like to point out about the, the firearm deaths. Um, but by virtue of the fact that suicides have been increasing, and in, especially in recent years, homicides have been increasing, firearm deaths overall have been increasing pretty rapidly. Um, so that's something else that I think this dashboard can help 